All right, so uh, you're starting your thesis journey, congrats. Whether it's for your diploma master's or even a PhD, writing a thesis can feel pretty overwhelming at first. Oh yeah, it's a huge undertaking, no doubt about it. It's like setting out to explore a whole new intellectual landscape. Exactly, and there's so many choices to make right from the start. Mm -hmm. Luckily, we've got Introduction to Methodology and Statistics from StatExpert.pro to guide us. They've packed this resource with all sorts of tools and tips, specifically for students like you who are writing a thesis or research plan, which, by the way, is sometimes called a disposition. Ah, yes, that's a term you might come across, especially in more formal academic settings. Essentially, a disposition is your detailed roadmap for the entire research process. Think of it as a blueprint that outlines everything from your initial research question to your methodology and expected outcomes. So it's not just some vague idea in your head. You need to get it all down on paper. Absolutely. And StedExpert.pro really emphasizes the importance of starting with a strong foundation. That means clarifying your research question, formulating testable hypotheses, and choosing the right methodology to answer those questions. Okay. So let's say I'm interested in, I don't know, the impact of social media on body image. Hmm. How would I go about turning that general interest into a solid research question? That's a great example. First, you'd want to narrow down that broad topic instead of social media in general. Maybe you focus on a specific platform like Instagram. Huh. Then instead of body image as a whole, you could focus on a particular aspect like body dissatisfaction among young adults. So my research question might become something like, how does Instagram use influence body dissatisfaction in young adults aged 18 to 25? Exactly. You've gone from a broad topic to a specific focused question that can be investigated through research. And once you have that question, you can start formulating your hypotheses, the specific predictions you're making about the relationship between Instagram use and body dissatisfaction. So my hypothesis might be that increased Instagram use is associated with higher levels of body dissatisfaction in young adults. Precisely. And that hypothesis would guide your choice of research methods. Would you use surveys to measure Instagram use and body dissatisfaction? Would you analyze Instagram content for specific themes related to body image? StatExpert.pro helps you consider these options. That makes sense. But before I get too deep into my own research, StatExpert.pro also emphasizes the importance of doing a thorough literature review right. Absolutely. You need to know what research has already been done on your topic. What are the key findings? What gaps in knowledge exist? This is where StatExpert.pro can be incredibly helpful. How so? They actually offer tools and guidance specifically for conducting literature reviews. They can help you identify relevant databases, search for keywords, and even organize your findings in a way that makes it easier to synthesize the information. That sounds way more efficient than just blindly Googling everything. But let's be real. A lot of students, myself included, get a little intimidated by the whole data analysis part of research is that something stateexpert.pro can help with. Absolutely. In fact, that's one of their strengths. They break down complex statistical concepts into manageable chunks using clear language and helpful examples. They even offer tool-specific guidance for programs like SPSSR and Python, which is super practical. Plus, they don't just tell you which statistical test to use. They explain why it's the right one and how to interpret the results. Okay. That is super helpful. It's like having a personal statistics tutor on call. Exactly. And they go even further, offering support for designing questionnaires and surveys, which is essential if your thesis involves collecting your own data. It's like they've thought of everything. They really have. They understand the unique challenges that students face when embarking on a thesis journey, and they've designed this resource to be a comprehensive guide every step of the way. So we've got a good foundation. Now we know what a research plan is, why it's important, and how StatExpert.pro can help us create one. But choosing the right methodology is a big decision. That's what we'll tackle next, right? You got it. We'll dive into the exciting world of quantitative and qualitative research methods and explore how to choose the best approach for your research question. And of course, we'll see how StatExpert.pro can guide us through those choices as well. All right, so we've talked about building that solid research plan, but now comes the, uh, the tricky part choosing the right methodology. Yeah, it's a pivotal decision shapes your whole research process. And luckily, Introduction to Methodology and Statistics from StatExpert.pro gives us a clear breakdown of the two main approaches, quantitative and qualitative research. Okay, so remind me again, what's the core difference between the two? Imagine you're trying to understand how people feel about a new park in their neighborhood with quantitative research. You'd survey a large group asking specific questions like, on a scale of one to five, how satisfied are you with the park? You then analyze those numbers to see overall trends. So it's all about measuring and quantifying 
those opinions. Exactly. You're looking for patterns and statistically significant results. This approach is great for testing hypotheses and making generalizations about larger populations. Makes sense. But what if I want to dig deeper into why people feel the way they do about the park? Mm -hmm. That's where qualitative research comes in, right? Right. Qualitative research is all about exploring those individual experiences and perspectives in a more nuanced way. Instead of a survey, you might have in-depth interviews with residents asking open-ended questions like, tell me about your experiences using the park, what you like, what could be improved. So with qualitative research, I'm getting those richer, more detailed insights, even if I can't necessarily generalize them to a whole population. Precisely. And StatExpert.pro highlights a crucial point here. Neither approach is inherently better. It all depends on your research question and what you're trying to achieve. So if my thesis is about, say, the impact of a new teaching method on student performance, I might choose a quantitative approach to see if test scores improve significantly in the group using the new method. That's a great example. You could compare test scores between the two groups using a t-test, which StatExpert.pro explains in detail, by the way. But if you wanted to understand how the new teaching method impacts students' learning experiences, you might incorporate qualitative methods like classroom observations or student focus groups. So I could actually combine both approaches. Absolutely. StatExpert.pro encourages students to think beyond the either mentality. Sometimes using both quantitative and qualitative methods gives you a more complete understanding of the phenomenon you're studying. Okay, I'm starting to see how it all fits together. But let's get real for a minute. A lot of us get intimidated by the actual process of analyzing data, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to those tricky statistical tests. Does StedExpert.pro offer any help with that? They absolutely do, and this is where they really shine. Remember those t-tests I mentioned? StedExpert.pro not only explains the concept, but also guides you through choosing the right type of t-test based on your specific data they demystify the whole process. So it's not just a theoretical explanation. They give you practical step-by-step -step guidance. Exactly. And they go even further, offering tool-specific assistance. Let's say you're using SPSS for your analysis. StatExpert.pro has dedicated sections walking you through how to run those tests in SPSS, complete with screenshots and clear instructions. That's amazing. It's like having a stat expert, expert right there beside you, guiding you through every click. That's the beauty of this resource. And it's not just SPSS. They cover R and Python as well, recognizing that students use a variety of tools. It's so helpful that they cater to different software preferences. I remember feeling completely lost when I first started using SPSS. Having that kind of guidance would have saved me so much time and frustration. I can relate, we've all been there. But remember, StatExpert.pro isn't just about crunching numbers. They also emphasize the importance of interpreting those results in a meaningful way. Right, because a spreadsheet full of numbers doesn't tell you much on its own. Exactly. StatExpert.pro helps you understand what those numbers actually mean in the context of your research question. They guide you through drawing conclusions, identifying limitations, and even thinking about future research directions. It's like they're holding your hand through the entire research process from start to finish. They really are a fantastic resource, especially for students who are new to the world of academic research. Okay, so we've covered the basics of quantitative and qualitative methods and how StatExpert.pro can help us navigate those choices. But there's another crucial element to consider designing effective questionnaires and surveys. That's a whole skill in itself. It absolutely is. And fortunately, StatExpert.pro doesn't shy away from that challenge either. They provide detailed guidance on crafting clear and concise questions, choosing the right response formats, and ensuring your survey is reliable and valid. Plus, they explain the importance of getting ethical approval before you collect data. Because ethical considerations are paramount, mm -hmm. especially when you're dealing with human participants. Exactly. StatExpert.pro encourages students to think about the ethical implications of their research from the very beginning, ensuring that participants are treated with respect and their data is handled responsibly. Okay, so we've talked about research plans, methodologies, data analysis, uh, all those crucial pieces of the thesis puzzle, but underlying it all is this foundational concept that StatExpert.pro really emphasizes the scientific method. Yeah, it's the bedrock of any rigorous research, whether you're investigating a cure for a disease or exploring the impact of social media on political discourse. Right, because it's not just about having a hunch or gathering a bunch of data. Mm -hmm. There's a systematic approach to knowledge building, and that's where the scientific method comes in. It's a framework for asking questions, forming hypotheses, testing those hypotheses through observation and experimentation, and drawing evidence-based conclusions. So it's not just about proving what you think is true. 
It's about being open to being wrong, to having your assumptions challenged by the data. Exactly, and that's where a key principle of the scientific method comes in objectivity. You're not trying to cherry pick data to support your preconceived notions. You're letting the evidence lead the way. I remember when I was working on my master's thesis, I was so convinced my hypothesis was right. Then I started analyzing the data and it was like the universe was telling me, nope, think again. It was humbling to say the least. We've all been there and that's the beauty of the scientific method. Mm -hmm. It keeps us honest. It forces us to confront our biases and to be open to new perspectives. So it's not about finding the right answer. It's about getting closer to the truth through a process of inquiry and critical thinking. Precisely. And another crucial aspect of the scientific method that StatExpert.pro highlights is reproducibility. Can other researchers follow your methods and arrive at similar conclusions? Transparency is key here. So you need to be very clear about how you collected your data, what statistical tests you used, any limitations of your study. It's about laying it all out there so others can scrutinize your work. Exactly. And that level of transparency not only strengthens your research, it also allows others to build upon your findings. Science is a collaborative endeavor. It's like adding your piece to the giant jigsaw puzzle of human knowledge. That's a great analogy. And StatExpert.pro, with its emphasis on clear explanations, step-by-step -step guidance, and practical tools, really embodies that spirit of collaboration. They're not just teaching you how to do research, they're inviting you into the community of scholars who are constantly pushing the boundaries of knowledge. And that's what makes this whole thesis journey so exciting, right? It's not just about getting a degree, it's about contributing something meaningful to your field, to adding your voice to the conversation. It's about asking questions that matter, exploring the unknown and embracing the intellectual challenge. And remember, even though it might feel overwhelming at times, you're not alone on this journey. StatExpert.pro is there to guide you. Your advisors are there to support you. And there's a whole community of researchers who have walked this path before you. So embrace the challenge, stay curious, and remember that the scientific method is your compass with hard work, a healthy dose of skepticism, and a little help from resources like StatExpert.pro, you can make your mark on the world. Well said. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of thesis writing. We hope you've gained some valuable insights and feel a little more confident as you embark on your own research journey. Mm -hmm. Remember, the scientific method is your friend, StatExpert.pro is your ally, and the pursuit of knowledge is an adventure worth taking. Until next time, happy researching.